Well, we're sitting at the uh, at the 2014 Spring National Muzzleloading Shoot in Friendship, and uh, I have the fun of being with David Price. Uh, we've been friends for quite a while, and uh, we we tried an interview before and had trouble, so we're trying it again. Uh, glad to have you with us today, well, David. Glad to, glad to be here. This has been fun. Glad to be here. Uh, David has a, 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 an extremely special talent that I'm going to ask him about first. And that's this gorgeous, these gorgeous swivel breeches, uh, flint locks that he makes. Um, how did you get started? What, how did your passion develop for these With kind the of swivels? Guns? Yeah, yeah. Actually, there were there was two movies back in the mid '50s. One was Blue Sky with Kirk Douglas, okay. and the other was Unconquered with Gary Cooper. Okay. And they both carried the same rifle. It was an antique. It was a Jaeger swivel breech. I see. And even back then, in the in the mid fifties, I fell in love with that gun that they were carrying. It was, it was kind of short, okay. you know, like typical Jaeger. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and the one with Kirk Douglas in it, uh, he picks up uh, what you would call a high checker. He's in a wagon, a horse and wagon. Uh -huh. and he gets in it, and Kirk Douglas looks at it, and he said something to the effect of, uh, "My, that's uh, an odd looking gun. I've never seen anything like that." So he actually shows them how it swivels. Oh, cool. And I saw that and I said, oh my God. If you had one of those, you'd have every, everything in life that was good. Is, <laughs> there you is, go. Is, is, you wouldn't need anything else yeah. for the rest of your life. Cool. And um, then it, it was in the other, now in the other picture, Gary Cooper just carried it around. He never, mm -hmm. I don't even think he shot it. But, okay. Uh, and, and he used to handle it roughly. Oh. And, and it, used to, it used to make me cringe. I'll bet. I'll but bet. then it was, uh, it was years later. And I bought a uh, a swivel action from Leonard Day from Massachusetts, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I built a rifle around it. But I was never really happy with it. It, it didn't lock up as mm -hmm. tight as I would like, and it, it was subject to wear, mm -hmm. the locking mechanism. And I tried to fix it. I took it apart, and I worked on it, worked on it. Finally, I said it'd be easier to build mm -hmm. one from the beginning, and uh, at that point, I designed my own design, and uh, I wanted a light rifle. I didn't want something. I never liked a heavy rifle, even when mm -hmm. I was 21, it, yeah. in my peak of my strength. So I wanted really light barrels. And once in a while, I'll give a seminar on, on building swivel breeches, and I say, you can't build an eight and a half pound rifle when you start out with 10 pounds of gun barrel. <laughs> I, I don't know what's so hard to figure out there. Yeah. I, I sat through a, a one of those seminars at Dixon's one year. And yeah. I remember the, some of this conversation. Uh, yeah. In fact, I, what I'm sticking thinking in my mind is eight pounds or close to that. I, my eight and a, my rifles were eight, eight and a half pounds okay. with the thirty two inch barrels. Okay. And I I cut them back to as much as uh, actually I did one at twenty six, but the rifle I use for hunting is. Uh, 28-inch barrels, and okay. that's uh, that's under eight pounds. Okay. Now I'm thinking too, uh, caliber of the gun changes the weight slightly. What do you like? What do you like to to caliber or use for calibers on these? Well, the whole thing with with keeping them light is a, a small barrel with a big hole. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, gets maybe a, a few and. He thought it was all right, but uh, uh, Rice told me that it would hit. He thought it was safe, but it was borderline. Okay. But when I talked with Green Mountain, he said no problem, no problem at all. Uh -huh. They wanted to change the uh, the thread size. Okay. On it, and uh, but I had to buy uh, fifty barrels minimum. Wow. To get the custom, uh -huh. and I wanted them eight hundred and fifty thousandths straight taper. To mm -hmm. 750 okay. in 54 caliber. Okay. So if you do the math, there's yeah. not much barrel with that. Right. And uh, I questioned him and I, uh, of the salesman, and then I asked for an engineer. Uh huh. And the engineer, yeah, yeah. I said, you answered that awfully quickly. You want to write down a few <laughs> numbers? Or... So he recommended the the, uh, the thread side on the plug. Okay. And uh, so when I, and then the the 50 of them was more than I really wanted, but uh -huh. he, he told me if I bought a hundred. That it was 
much better. I mean, way better price. Okay. So I bought a hundred. Gotcha. And when they were shipped, there was a hundred and six. So he said, "You want me to send the hundred six?" And I said, "Sure, go ahead and send them." Okay. And then when I got them, I was supposed to have thirty of them smoothbore, mm -hmm. and they were all rifled. Oh, they were. Okay. So I called him. We talked about it. And we weren't sure whose fault it was, but he said, "I'll, I'll build ten at a time for you." Okay. In smoothbore for mm -hmm. the same, same price. Okay. And I, I bought uh, ten twice. Okay. So I've had 126 barrels and I've got 16 barrels left. Okay. You've been busy. And that'll be the end of it. Okay. Now when you talk about this, you, when did you build your first one off that set of barrels? Hmm. Well, that's hard to say. It was, okay. It was a long time ago, yeah. but uh, the first, the first swivel breech I built, uh, it wasn't exactly perfect and I when I built the next one I made some changes and anybody that could help me uh, Dave Waters yeah uh, builds a, a swivel bridge okay. I sat down here at Gun Builders Hall with him on the porch uh, or Gun Makers Hall uh, one day and and we compared you show me yours I'll show oh, you mine yeah. okay. and uh, he recommended the locking mechanism uh -huh. which, which was a stumbling block for me uh -huh. And it was it was really good, so uh, I changed that part, and then uh -huh. I built about fifteen rifles in a row, and no two were the same. Every time I built one, I would somebody would suggest something, mm -hmm. or I'd think of something, and since then I haven't made a change. If anybody can show me something that would be better, uh -huh. if I would think it was better, I would make the yeah. change. But okay. uh, they've been working perfectly. I was going to say it's 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 a a long gradual development to get to the spot. Yeah, yeah. Do you find a lot of guys like a, a rifled slash smooth combination? In uh, not too many. Okay. Not too many. Okay. I didn't know if that was a. Yeah, I've thing done a number of them. Uh -huh. uh, I also build them with two sets of barrels. Oh yeah. And okay. sometimes three sets of barrels. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Some both rifle, both smooth. One okay. rifle and one smooth. Different yeah. lengths and stuff like that. Uh, well, we gotta think, well, we got to get New England in here and moose hunting. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that when you go moose hunting, you would go with a swivel breech. Is that right? Yes, that's what I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you want to tell them about the big, the big moose yeah, here? Yeah, well, I was in the lottery 18 years uh -huh. waiting for a permit, mm -hmm. and uh, I told my son, if we ever get a per uh, of course, he was in the lottery too, I said, if we ever get a permit, we're going to get a big moose, uh -huh. or we're not going to shoot any moose. <laughs> I've waited 18 years. I'm not going to shoot some, okay. little, some little puppy. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we did. We passed up on two moose, two, uh -huh. two good bulls. Uh -huh. And then uh, about the, I think it was about the sixth or seventh day of the hunt, uh, we found one, and it was it was quite a distance. It was getting getting late, uh -huh. and uh, we both fired at it. Uh -huh. I fired first. And he, then he fired, and the moose turned to go the other way. And then I had, when you shoot your second shot with the swivel breech, you have to bring the cock on half cock, mm -hmm. swivel the barrels, mm -hmm. and then bring it to full, full cock. cock. You could bring it to full cock, but on all that movement, yeah. you're liable to touch it off. Yeah. Well, I had uh, forgotten to bring it to full cock. Uh -huh. So I went to shoot my second shot. Uh -huh. And I almost bent the trigger. Oh, because he was still on hand. And then my son fired his second shot. But uh -huh. when we, we got the moose, it had one bullet hole in him, uh -huh. right behind the shoulder. Perfect shot. Cool. And it was one of the first two shots that okay. we fired. And okay. We'll never know. I was going to say, you can both claim credit. <laughs> yeah. But the, that, that 54 caliber ball did a great job. It took both lungs uh -huh. and. Uh, it broke a rib on the other side and lodged against the hide on the other side. Nice, nice. You can't ask for much better. Now, you know, going through a moose, I mean, yeah. that's that's yeah. that much with uh, uh, 90 grains of, of uh, two, two of powder. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, now you're from New Hampshire. You want to talk a little bit about your family and that kind of thing while we have a chance? Yeah, uh, I <clears throat> I've been living there full time since '87. Uh, Okay. And uh, I, I originally lived in Massachusetts and uh, had painting business in Massachusetts. And I did that uh, the first part of my life. And then uh, when my 
son graduated from high school, he didn't want any part of that. He wanted dump trucks and bulldogs and stuff. So <laughs> okay. we started developing some land in New Hampshire. He moved up into what was our our weekend okay. home. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when I turned 50 years old, I moved up there. Okay. And I, I sold everything I had. I some rental property and stuff. Uh -huh. I sold that off and uh, moved up there. And then uh, I was 50 years old and, and uh, had a real bad back operation. It was bad. It took me a year to recover. My son took over everything. Okay. And I didn't have to worry about a thing. And uh, one morning, I, well, I, when I was getting feeling better, I, I figured I could uh, work in my shop. So I built a couple of powder horns, which is not too physical. Mm -hmm. And then as I felt better, I said, this would be a perfect time to build a rifle. Uh -huh. So I started building rifles in the uh, early 60s. Okay. But I was had a couple of businesses running, so mm -hmm. it took me sometimes a couple of years to build a rifle. Uh -huh. I thought this would be a perfect time. Nobody bothering me. So I built a rifle. By the time I got it done, I was feeling pretty good. So one morning, I, I would be in my shop at uh, as early as 5 in the morning. Uh -huh. And my wife would call me in for breakfast at nine o'clock. One morning I went in and I said, well, I said, you know, I'm feeling pretty good now. I guess I'm going to have to go to work. And she said, why? <laughs> and the only thing I could think of, I said, well, I'm only 50 years old. Uh -huh. And she said, and? and? <laughs> so uh, I thought about it all day. My son came in that night and I told him of the what happened, and he said, well, Dad, you know, he says, I'm doing just as good without you. He said, I don't want to hurt your feelings. And in fact, he was doing better. I remember sitting in the back of Gunmaker's Hall and hearing that that exact yeah. same line. Yeah. I think yeah. that's funny. I've told that story a number of times. So uh, he said, why don't you retire and just play with your guns and uh -huh. go hunting and fishing and do whatever your demo please. Mm -hmm. Supplied us with everything we needed for our lives, so I made him an equal partner, uh -huh. and uh, he earns my living for my real living for uh -huh. me, which is a very good living. Yeah. And uh, he does all the work, and I get half the money, <laughs> and that leaves me free to work with my guns. As so I, say, you can I, I don't, I don't worry about time. It makes no difference how much I get done per uh -huh. day. If I don't feel like it, uh, I, yeah. I don't. Truth is, I feel like it all the time. Uh -huh. I love it. I, oh, yeah. I can't get enough of it. Even after all these years, yeah. but I'm 77. I'll be 77 in October. Okay. And that was when I was 50 years old. Yeah. And other than this past year, because of my Lyme disease, I'm putting in 50, 60 yeah. hours a week at it. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of time. You gotta love yeah. it. Mm -hmm. You gotta love it. You can just you can just hear the passion there. Yeah. Uh, if. Uh, if a guy, now this is closer to the truth than uh, uh, it isn't hypothetical because I'm, I'm expecting you're going to tell me about this. But if a guy came to you and said, "Money is absolutely no object. Build me the signature Davis Price, David Price mm -hmm. gun. Tell me about how that would work." Uh, that happened. Would, that actually. That's what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> that actually happened. Uh, one of my customers. I built a couple of things for him. I built him a. Probably as nice a swivel breech rifle as I ever built at uh -huh. that time, and then he wanted a a, a case set of pistols, mm -hmm. and uh, highly decorated, and and I built the case out of curly maple, and I carved the case. So, I think I saw that case. Yeah, tonight. and that'll be on display at CLA show yeah. this this uh, this year, okay. and then uh, a couple of years went by, and then he came back and he said that he wanted me to give him the name of the 10 best gun builders in the country. Uh -huh. And I said, you know, there is no such thing. <laughs> there is no such thing. Because what one person thinks is the best, uh -huh. somebody else doesn't. Yeah. So, but I said, what I will do, I says, I'll, I'll tell you the ones I admire the most, uh -huh. and I always have. And uh, I give him several books. Mm -hmm. And I said, you look through these books, and when you see what you want, you write mm -hmm. those down. And then I'll tell you what the ones that I like, okay. and then you can make the decision. Yeah. So uh, he picked. It turned out the, the uh, all ten of them couldn't do it. Uh -huh. 
but uh, I think the seven of them have completed. Okay. And uh, he included me in with the group, which I, I, I was humbled that. by that. I, I, these other builders that uh, I admired all my life and uh, took some lessons from some of them. And uh, I'm just honored to be included. Now, yeah. this, all the guns are complete. Well, actually, uh, I don't want to quote any prices, but I did build another gun uh -huh. that was the best thing I ever built. And I got it, got it all finished, and he saw it and he loved it. But some of the other builders hadn't finished theirs. Mm -hmm. So he gave us another year. Uh -huh. So I told him, I said, you know, I, I know I can build a better one. <laughs> and of course, you always think that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, I will, uh, I'm going to build another one. And you can take your pick of which one you That's want. That's cool. Okay. And uh, so he did. He picked the, the newer one. Okay. And he has them all now, and they're all going to be on display at the CLA show yeah. this year. I'm, I'm thrilled to uh, oh, yeah. to get there this year. Yeah, that's going to be neat. Yeah, I'm looking forward to CLA about as much as anything. It's that, those kind of things. Yeah, that's... Uh, and this is, these are swivel breeches, I'm pretty uh, sure. Yes. The yeah. ones I built for him were swivel breeches. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember looking at... Uh, uh, two two case pistols. Oh, oh back yeah, the pistols two... weren't swivels. Pistols. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember seeing those, and I remember the carving in the corners of yeah. the case. Yeah, on was the outside. Very yeah. impressive. In fact, I think on my website that's going to go with this interview. I think there's a picture that has one of those corners of that uh, that case in there. I'm not certain. I have to look. At you it. know, I I think I do remember seeing that on your website. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm really fascinated with those things, those guns, uh, and I know you've built a couple uh, uh, non-swivel breeches because I think uh, you let me hunt with one of them over. Yeah. I do the woods walk over yeah, here. Yeah, you did very well too. Uh, I think you I, beat me, didn't you? I, I don't I don't remember the score. I just the, the actually the thing I remember was uh, you asking me when we were planning the shoot to, or to go together. Uh, you said, "What are you going to shoot, Larry?" And I said, "Well, I had this kind of a." an old puke flintlock I was going to shoot. And you said, why don't you use mine? And it just stunned me. And I couldn't talk for a minute. And finally I said, well, hell yes. <laughs> anyway, and, uh, and then I thought to myself, I don't have any 54. I think it was a 54. Yeah, uh, that's what I call my stealth rifle. That's the one. That's the it's one. It's all dark. No, yeah. nothing shiny. Uh, I remember thinking, oh, I don't have any fifty-four stuff. Uh, I I was shooting a forty-five at the time, yeah. and uh, you said, hey, "Don't worry, I'll have I'll I'll be just carrying everything for both of us." And so we went through the yeah. woods, walked together. Yeah, that was that was a good time. That was the finest rifle I'd ever fired. At really? the time. Well, yeah. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. And, uh, that it, it is my favorite rifle, and I built some. Well, not, not the fanciest rifle I've ever built, but uh -huh. all that fanciness on them make them shooting better. Right. And right. Th this is my favorite rifle, but probably the nicest rifle that I ever built. I built for my granddaughter. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was yeah. going to ask you about her. Yeah. 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 I've got uh, three granddaughters and a grandson. Okay. My grandson is David Price the Fifth, by the way. Okay. Cool. And uh, when they were all. As each one was born, I built them a, a 5 8 scale miniature flintlock rifle. Very, very fancy. Okay. And I started it and finished it the year they were born, so their birth date is, oh, is on the yeah, barrel yeah. that I finished it. And they've all fired them. Very good. And uh, there's, uh, three, of, three of them have outgrown the small guns. Sure. And then the two oldest ones I built. I told them I'd bring them out the Nationals. I says, if you can meddle in the Nationals, I'll build you both a new gun, full size. That's a motivation. And we brought them out, and they they both they both uh, got medals. Cool. And uh, <coughs> I, when I went home, I put everything else aside and I built those two <laughs> rifles. And I built them identical. I I worked on them together. I I inlaid the barrel on one, then the barrel on the other, uh -huh. then put the lock in in this one. And when I, and when I did the carving. I did it on one section, so it was all fresh in my mind. Okay, yeah. And uh, I've had them hanging here in Gun Builders Hall, and I, I will have those out at the CLA this year. Yeah, I remember seeing those. Yeah, I think and if you two, hang them one over the other, you do well yeah. to find any yeah. difference in the two. It's like making two bench copies right at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I don't usually like to do that, but uh -huh. uh, I didn't want one to be better than the other. Uh -huh. Now, since then, one of my one of my girls has uh, she's old enough. She's eighteen now, uh -huh. and she's got other interests. Okay, maybe she'll be back yeah. to it at a later date. But the younger one, Lily, who just turned <coughs> sixteen, uh, she's a shooting machine. She cool. can't get enough of it. Everything yeah. she shoots, a pistol, shotgun, everything. I see. Yeah, she I does see. does very well. She's here with her father this weekend, and yeah. they're, they're shooting that new match for, for little Julie that passed away. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. And they'll all they'll all treasure those guns because of who made them. You know. I hope so. I hope so, and I hope they'll pass them on, especially those those little ones. Yeah. But uh, we we shot the gun builders match uh, yesterday here, uh -huh. and uh, I was lucky enough to win it. Did you really? Okay. That, cool. That's the fourth time I've won it. Well, it's going to be a habit then. <laughs> but I beat my son by a half an inch, <laughs> half an inch, and Lily cool. hit the tiger too. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, no, that's a that that's was a kind good of story fun. also. Yeah. Is there anything that I should have asked you that I can't think of? Anything you want to mention? That, uh... Well, I, I could go on all day if you, <laughs> if you let me, but uh, that pretty much sums it up. I've been building full time since I was 50 years old, yeah. and uh, I always think that uh, I can build a better one, and I'm learning all the time. That's, and anybody can show me something, I'm, I'm I always going. I think that's forward. great. Um, just because there might be potential customers seeing this, um, any idea about how far out you are as far as building and taking orders? Well, I, I used to run about two years. Okay. And uh, this past year, I've been recovering from Lyme disease. Yeah. And uh, actually, I've been on medication for a year and a half. And once I found that out, I stopped taking orders. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm down right now to about a year. Okay. Because uh, it, it did slow me down this winter. It never stopped me, but it, it came mm -hmm. close. I will make sure that your website is showing on the oh, good. on the page yeah. so that there'll be a contact method yeah. that's available. And I'm about to update my website because okay. the, the best stuff that I've built, I've built in the last five or six years, of course. Mm -hmm. sure. And I don't have all that on the website. Yeah. So this year when I go to CLA, I'm going to grab whatever guns that I can get a hold of that mm -hmm. I've done in the last five years and uh, have them a professionally photograph. Rick Great. Lambert will be there with his camera. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to uh, photograph that, uh, that collection that's oh. going to be there. I bet I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, I am too. I, I won't mention names either. But I remember when you told me this for the first time, I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go see if I can make me a list of 10. And I couldn't, get, I couldn't narrow it to 10. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, thought, but, you know, we have a lot of good kind of And every once in a while, I'll get in, interviewed for some reason by a newspaper or a local TV or something like that. And to see it and say, wow, you must be the last guy in the country building point lock <laughs> rifles. And I say... No, not by a long shot. In fact, I was interviewed by, um, oh, what magazine was that? Uh, but, he, but he said it anyway. And uh, Smithsonian. Smithsonian oh, okay. okay. I forget what year that was, but uh, when I told him, I wasn't sure he'd believe me. And uh -huh. I said, you know, I said, uh, I'll give you an education. I said, I hate to... I hate to uh, <laughs> spoil some of my thunder. I'd like to have the whole story about me, but I said, there's a bigger story here uh -huh. than just one gun builder. Okay. And I invited him to come to the CLA show, which he did. Oh, yeah. And he couldn't believe yeah. the number of top-notch gun builders. And uh, then I connected him with somebody that took him to a woods walk. Okay. And uh, again, he, and when he did his article, uh, he was very kind to me. He started off, it was about me. Then he switched off to this other stuff, but every once in a while he'd come back to me, okay. which was quite yeah. nice of him. That sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Well, this has been a pleasure, David. I thank well, you for being involved here. Well, I appreciate you offering me. I'm flattered that uh, no, this is, that you would ask. Yeah, this is fine. Let me see if I can shut everything off now. Ah. Uh.
Well, the good news is it's still running. Still running. <laughs>